Hello, everybody. Welcome to the pre-recorded version of what is usually a live stream here in Digital Asset News. But unfortunately, I've been moving around a lot here in Puerto Rico. We're renovating the house, so we're staying in a couple of Airbnb, Airbnbs. And uh, the Wi-Fi isn't the greatest, so we're going to do some pre-recorded ones moving forward. So if you missed it yesterday, and I don't blame you if you did, because it was a pretty choppy uh, rendition of our usual live stream. First of all, there was some big news over the weekend, and one of those is President Joe Biden and his, and his administration. It looks like there were some leaked emails, and they'll be attending a Bitcoin and crypto roundtable in D.C. in July. Mostly what it's concerning about is Bitcoin mining. And why did this happen? More importantly, probably because Donald Trump came out and said he supports crypto, and he actually met with the Bitcoin miners, and here's what happened in this closed-door event. Basically, he says this. Two things. One, Bitcoin can help win the AI arms race. And he also said that uh, all future Bitcoin to be mined or minted in the United States. And he is very adamant on that. So let's see if he comes through. Everybody's a politician or these guys are politicians. So you know what politicians do? Sometimes they don't fulfill their promises. But hey, it's a step in the right direction. The coalition included representatives from Riot, Marathon, uh, Terra Wolf, Clean Spark, and a host of others of Bitcoin miners. So that, to me, is pretty good. And like uh, the old adage just talks about, uh, for Bitcoin, first they, for actually everything, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then of course you win. I think we're in that stage where we're actually crossing the Rubicon. So that, we'll take a look at that. And of course, people will say, well, what about uh, Robert Kennedy Jr.? What about President Biden and what he did? What about Donald Trump and what he did? And all of their, their issues. Look, I don't, I don't care who you vote for. I just don't. But I would say that if you're uh, a fan of Elizabeth Warren, which I think most of us aren't, uh, maybe you could uh, help us out or help out John Deaton by contributing to his campaign. And there's a link in the description to uh, talk about of how and why he can win in Massachusetts. And of course, some of his stances. So if you don't feel like, oh, I can't give to him because he's not a vegan or whatever is your big thing. There's a bunch of different things you can find out about John Deaton and why I think he can win and is a uh, superior substitute for Senator Elizabeth Warren. So off to today. Today's is a red day. And I can't sugarcoat it, it just is what it is. To me, I always look at these and I'm like, well, great, because I never feel like I have accumulated enough, quite honestly. When I look at these markets, I'm like, you know, I probably could have done a little bit more of uh, dollar cost averaging or lump summing. And today's no different. However, for some of you, I understand this is kind of stressful. And this is why I put this video together. So today, looking at a market cap of 2.5 trillion, we've been kind of bouncing around this uh, 60 actually it's been higher it's been 66 67 69 somewhere around there now we're going to the 65s potentially going lower and of course there's a lot of different things that are skittish uh, talking about different wars potentially world war three who knows i'm in puerto rico right now the uh, uh, russian navy has a couple of uh, nuclear submarines just parked around cuba who knows what'll happen and then of course uh, the different headwinds that are coming on with the uh, macro economy here in the united states and uh, Jerome Powell coming out and saying that he's not going to raise rates, even though in Canada and the EU they've done that. But here, it's you know if we look at the data, it's looking pretty good. But who knows about the data? Who trusts it? All I know is that the prices are going down because there's more uh, sellers than buyers, and uh, investors are skittish. That's really what it comes down to. People are afraid, and when they get afraid, they do irrational things like selling Bitcoin or taking profits, which is fine. So if we actually zoom in on Bitcoin and take a look at it, in 24 hours, we've taken quite a tumble. Look, we were at uh, almost 67,000. Now we're, wow, 65.5. But if you look over seven days, is it any better? No. How about a month? No. Three months? Eh, now we're talking. One year? All right, this is looking good. Remember, in one year, we went from 26,000 all up to 73,000. So I know people are saying, well, this just... It should keep going up. Nothing goes in a straight line. And we actually talked about this and actually put this together. It was called All Time High to Next Having. And of course, if you've been listening to my show, you know that I believe in the four-year cycles. They're still intact. And it always goes like this. There's a having, all-time high dip reset. There's a having, this would happen in 2016, all-time high in 2017. There's a big monstrous dip in 2018, 2019, we had a reset. Then we get a halving in 2020, all-time high in 2021. 2022 is a dip and a reset, which we went through. Now 2024, we're in the halving. I think we're going to see an all-time high. I don't think it's going to be this year. Uh, I, I, again, I, I think we're going to see like monster bullish moves in 2025. But I could be wrong. But I said back then, I go, look, if you take the, the top from two previous cycles ago, from 2013 to the next halving, it was a 42% drop. If we do that from the 2017 to 2020, it was a 56% drop. But I said it was odd because 
and from the last top in 2021 to February 18th, which was at that point two months prior, it was only 23% drop. And then I said, and then when we got to six weeks, I'm like, that's an 8% drop. This is the only time that we have hit an all-time high before the actual halving. And we hit, we hit it uh, sometime around in the uh, uh, end of March, early April, correct me in the comments section, but we went to 73,000 where previously it was 67.7. So things are a little bit different. However, there's things we have to consider. And the one big thing that I take a look at is, let's take a look at history. Remember, in May 12th, 2020, somewhere around there, was the halving. Remember, the halving was at $8,700. And then just two months later, in July, it was 9,200. So it wasn't much of a big push. It was just kind of up and downs and up and downs. And trust me, when you went from 97, $9,800 all the way down to 87, you get a little bit skittish, just like what's going on right now. And I think it's the same thing because here we are in 2024. Remember we had it in around April 20th. We were at, the price was 61, 62, 63, somewhere around there. Then today we're at 66. So to me, it's just, there are some things that are a little bit uh, uh, similar, even though there has been some changes. And if I, if you really want to drive it home to my point, take a look at this. This is from Ben's website. Great links in the description. If you take a look at the return on investment after the halving, I'm just going to use the last cycle or the one from uh, 2020. And the uh, again, the halving was around May 11th, May 12th. And you can see from here just how kind of sideways action it was until eh, a couple, three, four months later. And then we start to see a, a big rush. Then we have a drop down, then off it goes. And then we go up here again, all time highs. But if you overlay that of where we're at now, this is having cycle four, this is laughable. This is laughable. And look at it, it almost mirrored what happened before. There was a big up and then a big down and then off, and then we go sideways. So to me, it's like, it's the same thing just happening again. And then I will remind you, because people will say, but Rob, you don't understand, because the rates and Jerome Powell and the different world wars and the things that are going on, you just know it's totally different. And it's just, we don't see all time highs coming. Oh, really? Might I remind you, not too long ago, there was this thing called the coronavirus. No matter what you believe it to be true or not, it still affected the markets greatly uh, all across the world. And we didn't think we were going to get out of that. When that happened, you went from $9,000 to under 5,000 in a matter of like a week. And then of course, there were some positivities because we started quantitative easing, rates started to drop. Then all of a sudden we had uh, stimmy checks and uh, the, the market started to really rebound. So I know people say, well, there's this and this and this. It's negative and in the bear, when, like, when it gets more bearish sentiment, it seems like it'll never go bullish. And then when it gets bullish, it seems like it'll never go bearish. It's the same thing happening over and over again. I just remind you of these days that we had because it's gonna happen again and it's happening again. So what I will re recommend, you know, what do you do? You know, what I do is I just take a look at some data points. Ben's got this really great point here on End of the Cryptoverse where he takes a look at the risk bands. And I'm not gonna go over it, but what I'll say is this. There's a link in the description. There's two videos I talk about. I take a look at certain indicators of where things to go. Right now, in my personal opinion, this is a great time to accumulate. That's for me. You can do whatever you want to do. I can't give financial advice. But you take a look at those indicators about where things are going and kind of go from there. There's two videos. One on the top is when I sell like the blue chips. The other one on the bottom is when I sell like the more degen y stuff. And it's pretty aggressive. So watch the, both of those videos. But then also, the last thing is this. We're in a bearish trend, a bearish sentiment. But on the rules, you know the rules. The rules are right beside me. And the very last rule is take profits. And I want to remind you of how important that is moving forward to when we get to the blow off top. Things right now seem like it'll never get bullish. When you're in the bear market, it seems like it'll, it'll, never get, uh, it'll never reverse. And the same thing's gonna happen in the bull market. It'll seem like it'll never get bearish. But on, on May 23rd, I said, look, I took some profits a couple of days ago. Sorry, that's when Bitcoins are between, it was around 71, 72,000. And I took some profits on some altcoins. And, uh, you know, that's just what it was. And then I got a lot of guff for it because people thought I was a moron because you're a moron because you took some profits and it'll never go down. All right, well. Anyhow, and I said the same thing on March 31st, which again, Bitcoins were on 71, 72, and the altcoins were up pretty heavy. Now where are they at? They're down. 
Do I get it right all the time? No, but when I say take profits, that's for me. You can do whatever you want to do. I'm not your dad. But uh, I'm just trying to help people out here to understand the markets that doesn't go up in a straight line. I want you to be successful. I want you to do the right thing. That's it for today. So look, like today's video, give it a thumbs up. So to subscribe, everything we talk about is time sensitive. But that's it for that piece. I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.